All right, blade changing time. I think this is the uh, most blades I've ever gone through for one project. This is a Turbo 7 high strength I got from Joe, Ma Joe Maine. Let's see. Make sure everything's in the guides all the way around. Cut this piece of hickory. Start taking a little dive on me. <laughs> so I got, let's see, probably three more logs left of that hickory tree. Move you guys back a little bit. Get you adjusted. There you go. Alright, hang tight. time I've run it well we cut some up with the uh, new coil in it and it was running good so this is a cold start first thing the next morning and you can hear it's breaking down sputtering so uh, I mean there's I say there's a gallon of gas in there but I think I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and put some more in there I don't want to run it out run it out and uh, have possible possibility of more issues he tuned it when it was already warm so it may be breaking down a little bit because it's cold and he might have to come back and retune it a little bit more uh, that happens so
Okay, let's get this forks up in the air. We'll get these two boards off. I want to take a look. After I cut a couple boards, I like to take a look and see what's going on with the log. Um, if it's got defects or sudden hole or something in it, I don't know about. Because that makes, it, that determines how I cut it. So that's to what I want to use the wood for. So I try to keep an eye on it as I cut through it. Beautiful wood. And now this is a uh, hickory. It's a smaller log. The pith is kind of offset because I cut a flat. I cut a straight line on one side. Since I had so many logs of the hickory, I wanted to have options. I have some that's really wide with live edge on each side. I have some that's really wide with one straight edge on one side. Because I had so many logs, I could make different uh, style cuts of lumber. Depend on what customers want because it never fails whatever I cut they want something different or just a little a little wider a little thicker one with a straight edge one without I mean I just so in this case I got so many logs I'm able to do a kind of a variety of cuts on it so pretty stuff pretty stuff let's take a quick look at it this morning in case you hadn't seen the other hickory log cuts beautiful now i believe this is mocker nut hickory um based on the bark it's not the shaggy bark uh hickory um so this is going to be a little bit darker in color so i did locate two more hickory trees on the property now that i'm getting a little better at identifying trees you know, it's a Life is a learning process, so I'm still learning now, too, just as well. <coughs> so let's get you up here. Let's go ahead and cut. Let's go ahead and cut this log up. I got you guys on the on the cell phone thingy, my bobber. So let's, uh, I got a four inch piece here. I think what I'm going to do is those are inch and a half. I think I'm going to go ahead. Let me just take a peek, quick peek at them. There's a knot here. Uh, I want to see how rotten it was or not rotten. Because uh, this right here, if I cut this at equal two inches, it'd make a nice book face. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it off for no reason. It's going to get more stuff on it. I'm going to cut it in half and then I'm going to flip it over and make it look like a book face and I'll bring you back in and show you what a book face looks like. Close enough.
fingers underneath it, I can flip it. <laughs> I just don't want to take my fingers out first thing this morning. Alright. Oh, this is going to be cool as a, as a book face. Uh, I'll show you something else too while I'm cleaning it off here. The, um, a lot of people think that at this point you can just let this dry and then once it's dry you can just start building or start gluing and putting stuff together and it'll be good to go. Well, I hate to tell you even after I, you just saw me cut it and I put a straight line on it and the fact is even as you're cutting it it's not staying perfectly flat true you see that line that's the reaction in the wood um, as you're cutting it the, the wood is moving now once it's nice and dry you come back and put a new straight line on it It'll be good to go, but man, isn't that pretty? So this is what they call a book face. So it matches on each side. That'd make a pretty table, wouldn't it? Very pretty table. Yes, sir. Hickory is always fun to cut. Um, it, it, it's a, it's a, a hate to love relationship. <laughs> I love the wood. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, but it's like cutting locusts. It's pretty tough. So uh, while the end product is gorgeous, and I love it, you can go through blades. <clears throat> and between the hickory, this is like the sixth hickory log, and probably the twelfth lo locust log. Joe, Joe at Joe Man Industrial Specialist, I will be putting another order in for blades here shortly. We are going through some blades. Uh, I'm going to ship them off somewhere to get sharpened don't know where but the average shipping right now is take our uh, sharpening is taking four to six weeks so uh i'll be slowing down here in a little bit because i got other projects to work on but while i have the uh ability to cut i am and it's june it's usually normally like in the low 80s but today it's 76 and it stormed like crazy last night but i don't see no trees down or any major damage, just a few branches here and there, thank goodness. So, and that'll bring us up to the next subject, which I'm going to take you up and show you in just a bit. It after I get this off the off the machine, is we're going to stop by the power station that we put in for this estate here, and I want to go over that with you in case you're looking at uh, power for your uh, backup power for your uh, home. So this is a very special unit. Um, I think you really like how we have it set up. So you guys just hang tight and we'll get to that. Mocker nut hickory. Mocker nut hickory. Beautiful stuff. That's the next big log. But let's go look at something else that I wanted to show you here on the farm that we did years back. Not many years back, we used to have to pull up a generator up next to the house and Plug it up, cut the power off to the house, and I got myself some nice uh, wasps right there. So, haven't been in here for a bit. So, uh, yeah, I gotta go get the spray. 
take care of that and I don't need that being an issue but this is our power center building there is over 800 amps coming in here and we got three 250 amp breakers these two go up to the main house this is an extra that is a spare and then this one is a non-generated uh, panel which basically right now we got it running the lights and stuff in here but that's 200 amps so we've got 800 amps worth of power and then we use this it's designed to be inside of a building uh, generac generator and this thing is absolutely awesome now there was a space requirement or open space requirement in order to have this in a building since this building is not connected to the house in any way the we kind of got away with it but we had to put in vents so this is a fresh air here these would be hot air out and then the motor blows the radiator is at this end here and blows out here and then of course you saw on the door we have it full ventilated i made the louvers so this thing right here runs off lp and has been completely really for the most part other than the battery we put in it trouble free pretty easy to uh manage here and uh it's on standby let me make sure because i it runs on wednesdays um so if you want to check it out what you can do is this is we'll only throw 100 amps max you can throw that off okay then you can come over here and hit manual Schedule A, service soon, and then you can hit manual start. And you have to throw the breaker. You either throw the breaker on that, or you throw the individual breakers on here. So I can manually run this and test it out, make sure it's working. Sounds good. So it draws the air in through the side and then shoots it out this end right here. So. Then all you have to do is hit the off button right there. You can flick this back on, hit auto, service schedule A. So this needs to be serviced. But it will run. It does come on. I'll have to call the guy that comes and does our service for it. And get him to come out and do the service. It's, I think it needs an oil change. So, Yes, this has been quite a blessing. We were able to take all the panels off the buildings. And the buildings become a sub-panel, basically. But this has been an awesome setup. So if any of you are thinking about doing something like this, this is kind of how you set it up. That's a trough for all your lines going out. They go down the ground and go to the buildings. Like I said, we have this as a, as just a non-generated backed up power, which we could hook to another building if we didn't care about there being a backup power. This is a spare, so it, it works, but there's nothing hooked to it, and that's 200 amps. And then we're running, uh, these are, no, I'm sorry, 250. So these are 250s. These run two 225 panels in the main home, and then everything else is hubbed off of that. At this point, we're going to separate it sometime down the line. But this unit right here has just been very, it's just been awesome. Um, I think this is a 3200, if I remember correctly. So it's it's a pretty good size unit. I'm trying to back into the wasps here because uh, they are. They're about angry at me. So let me just uh, give you guys a swing shut. Hopefully it latches. <laughs> and I don't have to I don't have to do that twice. Yes, it latched. Yay! <laughs> we got latches on the bottom and the top. So this was quite an ordeal to have this done. Um, with all the trenching and the new power run in and taking off the building and the new panels inside, it was around eighty thousand dollars. You know you have to buy this tank here uh, so 
there's a uh, wireless remote right there that goes to the company so they know when to uh, charge it. There's a dis there's a main disconnect in there, and these are just what's required to get all the power inside. So, yeah, works great. Very very happy with this setup. So if you're considering something like this, well, there's kind of an example for you. Well, I came back down to the uh, mill area, and to my surprise, I had a group of five uh, baby turkeys come out with four hens. I've seen them throughout the farm. They did have a lot more babies, but, you know, it's a tough life out in the wild. I'm sure the predators are going after them as much as they can. So, And I'm sure it's hard for those four mamas to protect them, but... Uh, yeah, it's good to see them. They came up pretty close to the uh, to the sawmill this morning, so I was able to get some good footage of them. So it's always nice.